Hello, my name is Rob Earlham, Senior Developer Advocate at Sitecore, and this is the next video in a series introducing some of the key concepts for Sitecore Search. We recently implemented Search on our developer portal, and this series is going to cover some of the different tasks we did on that project. Today, we're going to be talking about a question that came up during our implementation, and that's the differences between filters and facets. We're going to cover what each of them are and how we use them on the dev portal. So let's dive in. Now, filtering and faceting are related in that they're both used to reduce the number of results being returned to the end user. And this helps them get to what they're looking for faster. But crucially, they work in different ways. When thinking of the differences between the two, you can remember that all facets can be used to filter the result set, but not all filters can be assigned to a facet. So let's take a look at how that works in more detail. Filtering is commonly used to provide context to results being returned. By this, we mean that when a developer or marketer will usually apply a filter to certain usage of search within a certain area of the site. So for example, you could use search within a news section of a site and apply a filter so that only results tagged with a news value would be returned. Another example that we made use of on the developer portal is being able to control which index sources are being searched and when. For example, we're currently building out search to be used on the changelog portion of the site. So in that case, we would want to return only results specific to the changelog index source. Whereas our general site search used from the main homepage would still be searching across all of the different index sources that we have configured. This shows two pretty typical examples of where filtering is gonna be applied. But how do facets differ from this? Well, facets are typically applied to a set of results that have already been returned to further refine them. Again, though, you're helping the end user get to the result they're looking for. Typically, they're enabled by a developer or marketer through the search backend, the CEC, but then they're applied to a set of search results by the actual end user interacting with the site. Some good examples of faceting include things like refining by clothing site when working in an e-commerce scenario, or if you're working in a content style scenario, then maybe refining your results to only display certain document types. Okay, so we've discussed the differences between filters and facets. Let's go and take a look at how they're both used on the dev portal. Okay, so I've loaded up the developer portal. And first of all, we're gonna take a look at faceting. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do a search for XM Cloud. And this is gonna bring us to the full search results across all the different index sources we have matching that search query. And what you'll see on the left here is the set of facets that have been configured in the back end, the CEC. You can see we have facets for site name, allowing you to refine by the index source. We have a facet for the product that the result applies to, and also for the type of document being returned. And this is what I said before. So faceting is enabled in the CEC, but it's then applied by the end user. So if, for example, I know the results I'm looking for are part of the site called documentation site, I can go and click on the site called documentation facet and it'll drill down the results for me. Straight away, you can see how this helps users get to what they're looking for much more quickly. So how is filtering applied differently? Well, we're working on a few different implementations of filtering. One we currently have enabled is set up to search a specific set of index sources that have been configured. We do this so that we can enable and disable index sources via environment variables that makes it really easy to test new index sources offline before putting them live. To see this in action, I'm going to bring up the DevTools and we're going to hop over to the Network tab and then I'm going to make a new request through to Search. I'm going to just remove the facet we put on there. So we can see here our request has gone over to Search and if we go and look at the payload body, we can drill down into this to see what has been set. And what we have here is a list of all the sources that have been applied. What I'm going to do next is we're going to go and take a look at the CC and the list of sources that have been configured in there. I've loaded up the sources menu from the left hand side here. And these are all the different sources we have configured for the dev portal. What you will have noticed though, if you compared the IDs we just looked at to the ID list here, is that not every source is actually in use. The vast majority are, but there's a couple we're actually working on. The top two, we're currently working on the site called changelog, where we're looking to implement search within the changelog itself. 
And the top one you can see is currently failing because we're working on a new improved way of indexing the community site. This is being applied as a filter. It means that I can basically refine the results before they even get down to the end user to make sure it's only returning the results that I want to be displayed. And this is a great way for you to be able to test some of your index sources, for example, the new changelog and the community one we're working on offline before you want to make them ready in production. Okay, so that's given a quick introduction showing the differences between filtering and fastening. Thanks for watching the series and don't forget to stay tuned to the Discover Sitecore YouTube channel for future videos.